Right, this week is the Justin Cooper special. Start as you mean to go on. Yeah. Justin, this is for you. This is episode 30 something. Hang on, I'm going to get the mic ready. What 30. kind of noise does that make, Justin? Is that annoying? Is it 30 something? 34? 34. 34, 35. With 30 32. Something. And who knows what any of that fuck is about, so instead, let's let's name it. There's more of that coming, Justin. Yeah. This is um, episode 30 something. It's called Justin's Packet. All about Justin. Justin's Packet. <laughs> An episode about Justin's Packet. So I've got a complaint of my brother that opening sweet packets on the podcast is annoying. Does he not realise that it's one of the few things that brings joy to our lives? Oh, it's the thing we look forward to <laughs> most. The whole of the podcast on Sunday are talking off some sweets. Yeah. <laughs> sweets, anybody? Of course I will. I'll have some sour Skittles. I need to put pass, these yellow ones only back. Only because I had half a bag of regular Skittles before I came off, so... <laughs> this week, Skittles talk. Yeah. Have you had the, have you had the ones in the blue packet? No. For the future. Do you think them are good? You should find them. I'll give them a go. Like they call like dark berry skittles or something. But it's like forest fruits and shit, it's really nice. Awesome. <laughs> well you know, I just thought I'd take the skittles talking and run with it. <laughs> Do you think we should start with him? Because he's got news to do. I'm eating. Well I've I've got yeah, absolutely no. nothing. Alright, well you've been playing this fortnight because we haven't been I've been hammering Dark Souls 3 and um, a little bit of bits and pieces of other things off the PlayStation Store. Just time wasters. Wastelands 2. Fucking brilliant game. Wish I'd bought it sooner. Oh, that's the thing I meant to buy that because I wonder if the Easter sale's still up because no. when it I checked. for 15 quid. It is it? absolutely yeah, it was, it was fantastic like and it's the, the, the jokes and the Easter eggs in it are just unreal. Well, you only paid 16 for it, didn't you? Yeah, I think that, yeah. Um, See ya. Sorry, Justin. Well, here's, here's me, so far my favourite <laughs> bit because I had one. It's, well, give it a bit of background for those who don't know it. It's post apocalypse. Right, it's loads of years in the, in the future. And you're you're a ranger, right? And the rangers are basically like kind of like they're very much like the first police of the wild west frontier. It's like very fucking savage. And um, there's some advanced tech like laser tech stuff like that. But there's loads of fucking jokes about like the past. Like you buy junk items, it's got the usual junk mechanics in for money. But even the junk items are kind of funny. You know what I mean? Like you get like one where you, you pick up this like you, you get stuff out of toasters that are just little gems of things, and I picked a single a vi- a, This is a strange vinyl disc with grooves in. There is a faded label on it that says Cl- Creedence Clearwater Revival, <laughs> like shit like that all over it. But then you meet this kid who's who salvaged loads of arcade machines in his trailer, and he's learning how to fix them. And he sends you off on a little sub quest. He's like, "What I really need to complete my collection." is the legendary Philips CDI with a whole megabyte of RAM, the greatest console ever made. All of this stuff, fifth, only 50 ever sold, all of this shit. And actually I did find it for him and return him a CDI. But it's just loads, loads of like funny shit like that. There's like references to films that we love, like The Killer Tomatoes. Mm. There's loads of stuff like that. It's just, honestly, man, it's unreal, some of the stuff. And I've just been laughing me back and forth, but it's not just that it's funny. The combat's very XCOM. Yeah. The combat's like superb. Um, so is the character development. And, and, and so far, it's been a thoroughly enjoyable, well written game. It's got me totally engrossed. It's nice when you find games like that that are kind of like sneak under the radar a bit. Oh, that one did a lot. Because that's I, the thing, it's, it's, if I didn't know previous, I, I doubt I'd ever have picked it up like. Awesome game. Cool. I've been playing the um, finally finished Jaws of Hakon, the mm-hmm. DLC for Dragon Age, <laughs> the first DLC. It was really fucking good. I don't know why I didn't play it sooner. Have you done all the other ones? I haven't got them. I need to pick them up. 
Apparently the Deep Roads one's really good as well. Justin. Judging by the trophies, the last one called Trespasser appears to be huge, like the game itself. I think no, it's set two years after the events of Inquisition, isn't it? I don't know too much about it. Yeah, well basically the crack is, is like, I do all the other ones first. Because once you start that off, you can't go back to like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, Jaws of one's really, really good. The only bad thing about it is... You start getting tier 4 schematics and tier 4 weapons after the big boss fight at the end right. so it's kind of pointless unless you've got more DLC to be going on with yeah but well, no it's really good are you going to shock us with some news then? mhm mm not yet when I'm eating I'll ask you when I'm eating it's like that thing isn't it where you go out for a meal and like the waiter will always come over and table check you while you've got a, a cup full of food, food and it's like is everything all right? You're like mmm mmm mm, mm. mm. <laughs> and I think it's just every time with every single like, waiter, I'm, like, I'm sure it's on purpose. Next time I'm gonna just spit it out his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> just put, it, put it in your hand and <laughs> put the hand in your hand in the face. Go here, look. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. So anyway, you know how you're always like when I go off on me social justice warrior and feminist rants. And you're always like, can we not bring it back to gaming? And I always argue with you and say, this is gaming related, right? The enemy, the enemy have done this, um, which I can't, I can't remember which university it was, I'll double check. But these names should mean, because some of these names even meant something to me, and I don't even pay as much attention as used to. Right, Rob Pardo, former CEO of Blizzard. Genova Chen, um, founder of that green company, Dave Stoll, president of, of um, what's that here? Sounds interesting. In that's it, Energy Ward, something like that. Didn't know that one. Infinity Ward, Infinity Ward, yeah, Infinity yeah. Ward I couldn't read the writing. Um, Brandon Beck, now I've definitely heard of him. C CEO and co-founder of Riot Games. Peter Levin, president of Lionsgate Interactive. Right. Min Kim, former president of Nexon America. Jeffrey Kaplan, VP Design of Blizzard Entertainment. Right. In terms of gaming industry, motherfucking rock stars. Rock stars, CEOs, all worth millions. None of them need to do anything for the money. So, I'm going to double check, it'll probably be in the uh, description here actually. Yeah, that was it, University of Southern California. Right, so imagine if you were on like a, a games development course and stuff like that, and all of them speakers were scheduled to speak at your university. Right, it's like me when I was doing my music course, it's like somebody saying, Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, uh, yeah. Mom Steve, they're all coming to do a talk. Right, so all these mega names in gaming, and the university's cancelled the talk. Because there's no women. Yeah. Mm hmm Am I right about that? It's a fucking joke. That's the single biggest fucking... Oh. You know these feminists who want people to not be judged on the value of their gender, have now just then, but to do that, what they've done is judge them on the value of the gender. Yeah. Just because of the fact yeah. that these guys have got a cock... They've cancelled the talk. These people were doing it for students because they love the industry. Right? They want to get people interested in the business. Yeah, and they were going to all tell the stories about how they started, what they did. They were going to give them pro tips. Right? Do you think any of them are going to give a fuck about that university now? No. No. Do you know what I mean? But how, how can these idiots not understand, though, that just because, like, the absence of a woman in that lineup doesn't mean that any of them are, like, sort of, like... Well, here's my opinion. Stop doing gender studies degrees, right? Yeah, and then when you go into the real fucking world, you might end up being like the CEO of a company yeah. or something, not a fucking, not a fucking daycare assistant. Yeah. Like, fuck you. You the know what I mean? Is, though, is 
they like being daycare assistants because then they get to say, I've got a degree and I ended up being a daycare assistant, blah, 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 fuck the patriarchy, it's all their fault. Yeah. Because they like throwing blame, they don't like being accountable. The reason it. that the, 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 they're all men is because it's a male-dominated industry. The reason it's a male-dominated industry is because males enjoy the industry. Like, there is no patriarchy, they're not oppressed. There was nothing stopping any of the women I went to school with, nothing stopping any of them Going onto a computer programming degree, nothing. Yeah. They chose the wrong path. Women are in the West are free to choose, and they choose to not go into STEM. They choose to not go into engineering. They choose to not go into gaming. So when it's a male-dominated industry, and men are at the top. In fact, dominated is the wrong word. It's even just populated, right? Then you get the top echelon is going to be mainly men. Because it's a mainly male industry. Yeah. So. And that's not saying there isn't women high up in the industry. Exactly, there's just not as many. Yeah. Right? So, well, how do you get like, oh, I'll cancel this because no vagina? What the fuck has someone's genitalia got to do with the experience that they've had? You know what I mean? It's, it's a joke. Have you seen <clears throat> the new feminism, fourth wave, fourth wave feminism yet? No, you may not. We'll not catch on. Mm, I think you'll like this one. So, I've seen uh, posts on Reddit and there's loads of women, like, in the underwear, holding signs, or doing things that women get uh, told off to do by these social justice warriors. And um, just saying, I need fourth wave feminism. Because I don't need a fat, unhealthy um, monstrosity of a woman telling me that I'm not pretty <laughs> and stuff like that. I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool. It's kind of funny. It'll not catch on. It's just like a little political statement, but um, it's this it's, it's just going fucking crazy. The world's gone mad. So, I mean, imagine my reaction if when I was at college, a load of fucking snotty girls who didn't even give a fuck about my course got Steve Vai pulled from a fucking talk. Hmm. Can you imagine that? Like what the fuck? They just hate filled fucking harpies. But that was me thing. When I found it, I was like, I can't believe this. The world's gone mad. I mean, if I was one of them CEOs, right, and I got an application later down the line from someone who got a degree from that college, I'd be very reluctant to interview them. Because I would think to myself, Is he concerned about the gaming industry or is he concerned, is he one of these fucking beta male, fucking pussy whipped, feminazi fucking handmaidens? You know what I mean though, it's crazy, it's absolutely crazy. But this is happening throughout the gaming industry now, like, I mean even companies like Blizzard were dropping like, strong female characters in the games. And uh, Look what happened to Overwatch. Yeah, but, have you seen, um Basically, uh, like Tracer, the, that's what the character's called, uh, Victory Pose, where she stuck her ass out. Right? Social Justice Warriors went mad on it. Blizzard, Blizzard acquiesced and changed it to a different pose, but it's actually turned out to be like a classic pin up pose. So Blizzard's basically went, there you go, here's something different, which is essentially the same. Yeah. So. No, but the thing is, you can't ever, ever make these people happy. Yeah, I know. It's impossible. But I mean, like, Blizzard kind of went, there you go, here's a talking gesture. Like, yeah, fuck but, you. Yeah, but nothing really, nothing's changed. Do you know what I mean? It's just ridiculous, man. You know, it's, it's insane. The thing like, is, if they did that in a university in Britain, I guarantee that wouldn't have been pulled. Because it's not, that kind of shit isn't as prominent. It's not as prominent, but it happens. I would, I would be very dubious to agree with you when you throw out words like you guarantee it. Because there's already been loads of people in different areas that you're not aware of. Already have been no platformed in the UK, mate. Mm. It's already happened. Here's a name you might have heard of who got no platformed in the UK. Little known celebrity called Jermaine Greer. The no platform Jermaine Greer. Mm. You know what I mean? This is what I was on about with you, and I used to like to say, no, nah, it is relevant because they're, they're, they're coming after gaming. They still are. Like the whole game again is supposedly technically finished, but all they've done is just shift focus. 
But that's the thing with any sort of like group like this. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's religion or gaming or any any sort of like fucking nut job movement, right? All they ever do is shift the goalposts until eventually they fade into obscurity. Yeah, they need to fucking hurry up. But that's the thing. It's going to take a long time, and it's going to suck in the meantime. But you know, can you imagine being on that degree? Though, do you know what? Honestly, honestly, what I would do. I swear, I would. I, if I was a student there, I would. Thank you. I would go and I would say I want to quit my course and I demand all my money back. Yeah, I wouldn't be happy about it. I would that. demand a full refund, and if I didn't get one, I'd go straight to a fucking education pressure lobby, and I would fucking make an absolute noise, because they've put the demands, the demands of someone else's feelings. Above the precedent of someone else's paid for education. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They've prioritised some fields of some feminists over like delivering what they probably promised they were going to deliver when selling the course. It's absolute lunacy, isn't it? So, yeah, I had that. And I've been playing Wastelands too. Very good. Awesome. What have you been playing? Like oh, you've just said, Dragon Age Inquisition. Yeah. <clears throat> have you seen um, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro has tweeted this picture? Okay. Yeah, cool. So that's obviously the ghost from PT. Yeah. And he's just wrote a Buenos Nachos. Good night. So... I think that's it. I think he's not. You think he's saying that's the end of it? I hope not. Because it wasn't him and Kojima back together to do something. I don't know if they never said that though. They said it would be a spiritual successor to it. I mean, let's not rule out the possibility that he's just trying to, like, you know, stir the pot, so to speak. (coughs) Yeah. Because he wouldn't be the first person ever to do that, ever. You yeah, know what I mean? Have you heard about the new Half-Life? <laughs> <laughs> what? But Half-Life's been confirmed. Sure, it has. Has. Gave Newell told us in my dreams. Just I'll, like I'll tell you when you'll get your next Half-Life. I think it's something like 550 million years, is it? Mm. I'm telling you it will happen one day. Well, one day. <laughs> no, what it'll, ha- it'll be, it'll be like, you know when you just had a bunch of dickheads who bought the licence and made yeah. a new Tony Hawk's game? It'll be the same for Half-Life, I guarantee you. As soon as that licence is up for grabs, someone will have it and they'll make a fucking pig's ear of it. And then that'll be that and you'll be gutted and you'll wish that I was right. I think the reason people are so, like, not, like, so passionate about <coughs> Half-Life 3 is because in terms of, like, uh, like the mythos and like the law, it's mm. like there's so much you could do with it. Do you know what I mean? Like the second one drew me in. Like fuck, do you know what I mean? The second one was awesome. And like, what's his face, Doctor Doctor Brain? He's still <laughs> up there in my like top ten villains list, just because he's like, he's not like your stereotypical villain. He's not like Paul Mad or anything. He's just like he's just always there. Do you know what I mean? In the background, like wherever you go, he's up on screens and stuff, telling you about like. How you should totally just like do what the combine says and fucking be a little bitch. Fucking hell, man. Based on Big Brother, very much, isn't it? So, um, the Battlefield World premiere for Battlefield 5 is going to be May the 6th. Yeah, I heard. Are you going to be watching with bated breath? I'm going to be watching. I don't know about the bated breath thing. To be honest, uh, I am I am disappointed already. Yeah. Now that I know it's not World War Two, or World War One, whatever we thought it was going to be. But it's actually a super futuristic one, a la fucking Black Ops Three. It's a bit disappointing. Yeah, it's like they've totally lost what set them apart from Call of Duty, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, like, who the fuck wants futuristic shooters? If you want a futuristic shooter, you play Borderlands or Star Wars. Yeah, or Battlefront. Yeah. And um. The new COD's coming out. Um, apparently, it's going to be announced sometime soon. Yeah, but it's going to be infinite warfare. 
Yeah. Which makes me wonder what are they going to call the one after that? Because where do you go from infinite? <laughs> you know what I mean? Infinite, infinite warfare plus <laughs> one. Yeah. You knew where I was going with that. But apparently they're going to have, you know, the original modern warfare. Yeah, the remastering. Call they're going to remaster it yeah. and put it in with this game. I mean, that was the last good COD game. I don't think there was any really good ones. I mean, it's nice. It's nice, but it's like... I don't know. Does does it... Will it make me want to buy Call of Duty Infinite Warfare? No. No. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Now, fucking hell, I've got an Xbox 360 sat at home upstairs in my bedroom if I really want to... In fact, I've actually got the disc as well because it's when... Uh, it used to be Amy's dad's and he'd give us it when we moved in. So I've got it there if I really want to play it. It'd be amazed to know in the several months of living, like, you know, in my own home, I haven't. Um, <laughs> you know, as soon as I have got the money, like, I am, I know I keep going, bring it up, but I'm going PC, like. I keep the PlayStation 4 and I play on it, but as soon as I've got the money, I'm going PC. I want some, I want a better variety of shooters. Do you know what I mean? I, w- I just want better everything. I want better variety of shooters, mainly. I want to find a good World War One or World War Two map driven team based shooter. Do you know what I mean? Honestly, running and gunning. My last experience of Call of Duty was when you brought one of my house and you're going, go on, just give it a go. Just give it a go. And 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 I'm telling you now, on my first round I went fucking something like fourteen and seven. Yeah. Right? And I shouldn't be able to do that on a shooter. Well, it was, it was the same when uh, we went down for the last <coughs> now we stayed at Andy Wilde's and he put Black Ops 3 on and he gave me the pack and I finished my first round on a massive positive and he was like, you're really good at this and I'm like, no, I've just got a good pedigree and good shooters, do you know what I mean? He's like, oh, I'll just get like smashed up, I'll just get baked off my tits and like, fuck about and I'm like, well, fair enough, that's great, do you know what I mean? But this isn't really like a great game. <coughs> I suppose, in, I mean, credit where it's due, it was reasonably funny to pass the pad about and have a couple of joints, but, you know, would that make me buy it? No. If I went back to how it was, Call of Duty 1 and 2, the PC games, they were great. Basically, all that needs to happen is Battlefield needs to sort its shit out and get back to, like, Bad Company 2 era, mm-hmm. or even just Battlefield yeah. 4. No, nah. Battlefield's done. We just need a new boy on the block. We need yeah. a new kid on the block. We need a new franchise. We need something totally fucking fresh and good. That's what we need. We need somebody who, like, understands why us kind of shooter players play shooters. The problem, the problem is, though, is, like, <coughs> for the vast majority of people, like, a new IP like that, they'll just get crushed by Battlefield and I'm Quad. Quite because everyone, when there's a new one of them comes out every year, then people, it's, it's the same with FIFA, and you're, like, hoping people just spend this fucking ridiculous amount of money on essentially the same game but people do and this is why like yearly IPs are a thing because people are willing to pay do you know how you do it though you just make your game good that's all well and good though but say I've, I've got a really good shooter right and you want to play online with your mates and all your mates are playing Battlefield there'll be enough you might not you're just, you're just going to have to release it for people who play and you'll have to play with strangers and make some new friends, you anti-social little fuck. No, I'm not talking about, like, for me, I'm talking about from, like, a developer perspective. If somebody needs to do it. Somebody needs to, yeah, but, Somebody like, needs to and start. It's like pissing in the wind. You need to start in the 1900s, and then the second game, the, the, the release, Second World War, third game, Korean War. I keep saying, game. what we need to do is go on the PlayStation Store, get fucking chivalry, medieval warfare, right, 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 and just start on that. I think we should. Yeah. If you get it, I'll get it. I'm in. I'm in on that. If you pay we'll get... for it for us, I'll get it. <laughs> I'm not made of money. Callum will get it. Callum would love that. Callum actually. would love it. Yeah, I think we should get that. I'm down. What I know from watching it is that archers are shit. <laughs> you can go archer then. Squishies. Now they're like they're great if they can find somewhere to hide out, but if they get if if they get spotted by anyone, it's just game over. So, cool article I found here. Now I think it's quite funny. Sony's PlayStation Network 
off sales alone, just on games, is making more money than all of Nintendo. <laughs> That's mint. <laughs> Justin. New, new uh, Nintendo console launches next year, doesn't it? Yep. The one that they've already said isn't going to be as powerful as current market machines. Yeah, but they've been, that's been their crap for the past, like, well, since the fucking N64. Mm-hmm. It's just ridiculous. Like, the N64 at the time had twice the processing power of the PlayStation, but they didn't know how to use it until the end of the console life cycle. And by that time, the, the PS2 had, la- had landed and it just blew it out the water. I love Nintendo's thing about like just making it impossible for other IPs to get on. Nintendo are garbage. Nintendo need to sink. I'm in a really fucking rotten mood today. Nintendo need to sink. Call, I think it, Call of Duty needs to be fucking banned. Battlefield, the kid, guys who made Battlefield, do do us a favour, kill yourself. <laughs> kill yourself. It's you're That's over. online bullying. Kill yourself. <laughs> the feminazis. Who stop them guys doing the presentation? Kill yourself. Basically, what needs to happen for me to be for me to be happy is for Axis need to hurry up and pull the head out their asses and port XCOM two. Then I'll be happy. <laughs> I'm not so bothered about that now. I'm enjoying Wastelands more than I enjoyed XCOM. That's quite a strong statement. I, I'm, I'm not joking. Yeah. I'm not joking, mate. It's it piqued his interest it's, now. It's, it's immense. <clears throat> Wasteland is better. It's fiddly. It's fiddly as fuck at first because it's a PC port. And, but once you get your head round it, it's it's pretty straightforward and it's it's just so good. The thing is, though, is that can, you can looking at it like you can tell that it's a PC port, but at the same time, I really like PC games where I had my laptop that are like that where there's like loads. Basically, you can t- well, it gets fiddly because the functionality, you have to shrink it down for a pad because there's only so many buttons. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But I love fucking PC games that have like hundreds of fucking like keys for shit. Like that's what I really, really liked about... Uh, I mean, obviously this isn't a PC game, but uh, Morrowind as well. Like the amount of options and spell selection and shit that was in that compared to like how it's been progressively torn down in this every... What I love about sense. this as well, do you know what I've missed in gaming? And I didn't, and I've said before, we've all said it, but I just didn't realise how much I'd missed it till I started playing this. Is actual real consequences for your in-game yeah. decisions? Yeah. Like you can get friendlies turn on you, even in-party <laughs> friendlies can turn really? on you. Yeah. That's cool. I just tried it out with this guy when he joined me, so I butchered his tribe, and uh, <laughs> yeah. he he fucking skitzed out, went nuts on me. It was brilliant. Ralphie's a little bitch though. Isn't oh, he? Ralphie's a fucking <laughs> fag. But there's loads, there's loads of like really cool things you can do. Like there's some <coughs> brilliant ways to end stuff. You know, it's just, it's just so good. Your party composition, everything changes the way you develop your characters. What's really funny is I, I had to re-roll. I've, I've restarted another two times, as you know, I would have done with any game like this. Because especially with it being so intricate, right? About six, seven hours into play, you're like, I've made some fucking fundamental mistakes with my fucking character creation here. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't realise how schoolboy they are if you've never played the game before mm. until you're into it. So I've re-rolled them. But I've kept us all with basically the same role. So because you've you've made a glorious um, juncture to join in the gym, right? You're, you're me heavy. It makes sense. You're me heavy, you're me heavy gunner. And also... <laughs> As a um, testimony to our D and D sessions, uh, you've got a very very long list of um, bomber skills now. Excellent. So it's gift funny. He's he's a fucking fag with a um, he's got an auto rifle, and I gave him kiss ass because it's the most like like offensive like skill in the game. And I thought, who do I hate the most? <laughs> <laughs> how how I hate how the most. So, but his 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 character is like an auto rifle beast, like the same way he plays his fucking shooters, really. And ironically, my guy's gone sniper rifle <laughs> and shotgun. And Kaylee, obviously, Kaylee's sniper, and like. But I've kind of the, the things I've rectified is I hadn't spread the surgeon and the medic kits across, like, and the medic skills across the party properly. 
Um, and one person, so if you medic yeah, died, yeah, you're exactly. <laughs> like little things like that. Um, also, when I was getting other party members, because you've got your four core party members, and then you get three transitional ones, who NPCs, but they join you. Mm. Um, now, they were like coming in. Oh, look at this! Look at her weapon smithing. I don't need to put my weapon smithing up now. I'll put up all of my weapons. So I was doing that, but then I didn't realise that they were off. temporary. Yeah. So she was fucking off, and I was like, shit. You know what I mean? So I've been kind of like putting all my core stats into my key players. You know, and it's, it's, it's fucking great. I've picked up this, this weird little thing called... Um, oh, what's it called again? Aid? Not a nightmare. He's not a member of my party. He just follows me about, asking for sweets. He's like a little troll thing. Like a night terror, he's called a night terror, right? And he's like, you just, you give him sweets and he gives you, you know, he's just happy. And then he just randomly stands there. He doesn't, he doesn't engage in combat, he just stands there. So he starts shouting stuff about like, um, I've got peanut butter allergies in the middle of a fucking battle. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, stuff like that. And then fucking, uh, and I looked, I was like, how's he not getting drunk? He's got like, you, to give you an idea... My guy now has got like about 140, 150 hit points and he's getting pretty tough. He's got 3,000 hit points. He just stands there, just sorting up bullets, talking about how he likes candy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... How oh, peanuts could kill him. But, but it's like, it's so like... like yeah, little, you should give him some peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll find some, I will. Like, like um, loads of touches like that in the game where I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? It's so good. It's so good. Do you do you miss the days of like, you know when you you you'd link up your console to somebody else's and you'd sit and play a multiplayer for a night? Do you kind of miss that? Yeah, or sometimes. With the online thing, does it not bother you? I kind I do sometimes miss local multiplayer. I don't I don't miss split screen because for obvious reasons, you, half the time you could barely say what the fuck you're doing. But having said that. There is something really fun. It's like, it's the same, I kind of say it's the same kind of crack as this. Yeah. It's just you sat with your mates on a couch playing games, taking sweets out of each other, yeah. But it's like, I know you can do that online, but there's just... It's not, yeah, it's not the same. Yeah, there's more of a social element when you're all in the same room. There's this website called uh, Air Console. So you load it up and it's basically got SNES-style games on it. And you can have local multiplayer with your friends on your TV and you use your smartphone as a controller. That's, That's awesome. Cool. I thought it was pretty cool. Not the first people who've done the, the smartphone link up thing. There's, um, there's a game on Steam called Drawful, I believe. And uh, you've got to, like, it's kind of like a game. What the fuck's it called, that game? I can't remember. It's not fucking Pictionary. Might be Pictionary. I didn't fucking Pursuit? No, like, someone's got to fucking, like, uh, someone writes whatever, like, it down. Someone, Everyone's got to draw that. Oh, that and is then, Pictionary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's like Pictionary, but you use your, your smartphone as your controller. That's not bad. Do you, little fun fact for you. What was, there was a TV show in the 90s that was based on Pictionary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was it called? What's My Line? What's My Line? No, it no. might have been. But here's a fun fact for you. It's where Johnny Vegas started. Huh. As a contestant. On there. Lionel Blair. He was he was always on it. I remember that. So there's a rumor going about that the Xbox One Two. Is Twelve already, then. Yeah, has already started production in February. You know how a uh, good guy. Fucking hell! I kind of breathe. Phil Spence. I'm full of snot. It's his fucking nose ring. It just I keep leaking snot. That's, that's beautiful. Phil I know. Spence. I'm gonna check it out. I think. I think Natasha's a lucky girl. <laughs> yeah, she is. <clears throat> so yeah, good guy Phil Spence said that um, a new version of the Xbox One wouldn't be happening at all, and it wasn't in their priority. But apparently, they've already started production one in February. So everybody's calling it the Xbox One. Two. Slim. The thing is, though, that's typical of fucking Xbox fans, because that means it's Xbox 12. See, this is the thing, though. I mean, like, it's what we were talking about before with, like, the PS4K and that. Pointless. Yeah, but it's like, I'm not going to bother 
getting a PS4 K because I've got a PS4. However, I've already said that at some point I wouldn't mind an Xbox One. So if this does hit the shelves, then that just means I'll get a PX One, uh, uh, Xbox One Two. Have you got a 4K TV? I think I do actually. Mine isn't. There's no point. Apparently, there might not be a PlayStation Five either. Um, the guy who made Oddworld was talking to the president of Sony and he was asking him about the pre- when the PlayStation 5 would be coming out and, he, and the guy said, if. And he said, so you'd go on record as saying that and he said yes. There'll be a PlayStation 5. Of course 5. there will. Yeah. There's, there's I can't see them stopping years. it. I mean, they, have, they got nearly fucking ten years out of the last one, man. The thing is, though, is it's not even that. It's like Sony, even like throughout the, the course of the lifespan of the PS3 and that, they were fucking, like, money was just fucking pouring out of them in terms of, like, their electronic sales and stuff. They were hemorrhaging so fucking yeah. much. And the fucking, the, the, play, the PlayStation 3 kept them afloat. Well, they shut down the... Um, Fire. Yeah, and they've... they've, they've they shut down the, the, the music side of it, didn't they? Yeah. Like, making stereos and shit like that. Like, which they've, is what they've they poured so much of their effort into gaming now because that's where the money is. Why would, why would they stop? I know. It's ridiculous. It's... It's just fucking sensationalism, that's all it is. Yeah. Have you seen this month's free games? No, what are they? Oh, please be something decent. It's not. <laughs> I mean, you know how the Xbox, in my opinion, has always been better? Yeah. Could be everyone's opinion. Anyone who isn't a fucking Sony fucking pony fanboy... You, you, don't, you don't need to tell me what the Xbox ones are. Don't <laughs> I want to know. I like to feel the pain. Well, well, it's like this. The Xbox ones are not as good as the PlayStation ones. So that says how good this month is for free games. So, for the PlayStation 4, we have Tropica 5. What's that then? That's not terrible if it's what you're into. But it's not... But yeah. We won't like it. It's not Did you ever play, like, fucking Sim Sid Meier's Civilization oh, or all like that? Can you like it? Yeah. It's really basically like Liam, Liam Jones, he loves it. He loves Tropical. Oh, that that's free. And then you have Tabletop Racing World Tour. That sounds alright. Is that like Micro Machines? Kind of. Get in, I'm alright. But right a, bad, a bad version of Micro I Machines. I don't care. Is there a good version of Micro Machines? Yeah, yeah the Micro the Machines? It's not good. None it's of them are good. The one on the Mega Drive. Drive. Yeah, it was class. <laughs> they're appalling. They're great, but they're... Up. Can you remember, it was the Mega Drive where you had to share a pad with two people, wasn't it? You had, like, one pad between two. <clears> Do you remember... Yeah, it was mint. It wasn't the Mega Drive that that was so on the. Uh, for the PS3, you get Bionic Commando Rearmed Two, <laughs> Loco Roco, C- I can't even pronounce that. Cocachero, yeah, I forgot. Loco Poco, Acapulco, something like that. And Down then God of War, Poco. God of War, Ghost of Sparta for the PSP. And that's so, that's the PlayStation so games. I'm trying to find the, uh, I mean, the Xbox last game. Really. No, I can't find them. Probably. But they shite anyway. Yeah. I'm not that fucking bothered really. We're not that far off No Man's Sky. I know. Not long. I'm I'm really annoyed though because if you remember several months ago, I'd said that I'd been following like a uh, like a Steam, like. Dungeon Crawler called Darkest Dungeon and uh, it's been out the full release is out now on uh, on PC and has been for several months and they, they said they were going to make the port to PS4 uh, the predicted first quarter and then they've just updated I've heard nothing for ages and then I've just read the thingy this morning there was a news article about it saying they're pushing it back till late August so fucking hell much I am disappointed much am I disappointed. Much am I disappointed. I'm starting to get bored of waiting for it. <coughs> I'm bored of waiting for it now. I'm moving on in my head. You can fuck off. Not bothered. I can't find anything yet about the new Red Dead though. I might have a look. It's apparently the name's Red Dead Renegades. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. So Ubisoft have confirmed that at E3 they're going to be shown Watch Dogs 2. <laughs> Why? Really? <laughs> no, hang on, hang on. Right, maybe. Let's let's put our optimism sure, hats sure. on for a minute. Okay, I don't think I have one anymore. <laughs> I'm maybe too jaded. They've learned from the mistakes and this one might be good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a good comedian. 
I'd, I'd rather live in a world where that may be possible. <laughs> but you know it's not. I know, but I'd still like to live in that world. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fucking gear that mate. What? His Mario t shirt, I think he's uh, he's talking about. So fuck it's got Bowser on it as well, look. It's Mario Nintendo shirt. Yeah, it's Nintendo good. fanboy. So yeah, they're also shown For Honor, which looks shit. Ghost Recon, which I'm still kinda of hoping is gonna be good. Is, which is that the Wildlands one? The in Columbia with the drug. Yeah, that looks uh, good. I, I hope it's good. I hope we're not just getting suckered in by a really good promo trailer. I know. Uh, South Park, The Fractured Butthole, and sp- The New Splinter Cell. The New Splinter Cell. But, uh, oh, I really hope that Ghost Recon is going to be as good as what the trailer makes. Oh, and uh, don't forget as well, the new Half-Life. Yes. I can't believe they're actually making a new Splinter Cell. It's only been like fucking how many years since the last one? 212 or yeah. something, I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't believe they're making a Watch Dogs 2. I can't believe they're making Watch Dogs 2. I think they're fucking fools. I think Watch Dogs 1 should have ended Ubisoft. Just ended them right there. Well, there. speaking of which... Do you remember you... how much we were looking forward to that game? Yep. Yeah. Did you know what Watch Dogs 2 in the trailers for it was one of our whole things that inspired this podcast where we were like, look at the next gen. Look at look at yeah. how... Have you seen the Watch Dogs 2 trailers? <laughs> no, oh. Watch Dogs... It wasn't Watch Dogs 2. Sorry, the Watch Dogs trailers... Have you seen the trailers? Oh, we need to get in a podcast. It's going to be our era, this. This is our era for game and to remember all that. Mm-hmm. And then, and then look, what happened? Much disappoint. <laughs> I am much disappoint. Much disappoint am I. Um. <laughs> That's what uh, we should just change the name of the podcast to Much Disappoint. <laughs> Ubisoft, I am disappoint. <laughs> Apparently, though, um, do you remember the other week when I was saying that Vivendi were planning a hostile takeover of Ubisoft? Right. They've been slowly but surely creeping more fucking shares, like, continually. Good. So it's happening, like, whether Ubisoft like it or not. Ubisoft need new management. The, the CEO said um, if Vivendi do end up taking a hostile, making a hostile takeover, it's going to spell out the end of creativity for Ubisoft. <laughs> Well, what creativity? Exactly, but I would argue that, like, they're kind of right, because Vivendi kind of strike me as, like, they're like the fucking mobile developers of the world, do you know what I mean? They're just like, yeah, we're relevant, we know what we're doing, this is what people want. Well, didn't they own Activision for a while? They did, yeah, I think so. Vivendi Activision, I'm pretty sure, and they own Blizzard. Yeah, but then obviously those have broke away from them. Thinking about it though, I mean Ubisoft do have some nice little indie games like Child of Light and things like that, and if all that were to go... Trials Fusion. Trials Fusion, yeah. Then yeah, yeah, I can see that being it. And I know we're ripping on Ubisoft, but like that's only like, there's that track record over the last two years prior to that. They, no, no. No, that's not, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's just like, I think if they do end up getting taken over, then they'll end up just spewing out fucking the same shit every year. I think that's what would happen. Yeah, because I that mean, what they do anyway. He just just imagine if they did that with a franchise like, like Assassin's say, Creed. Assa- no, exactly, but I mean, like, that's exactly what I was about to say. That's what usually happens with Assassin's Creed, but like it doesn't really happen with the Watch, rest of the right really does with, Like Watch Dogs. <clears throat> well, might yes. Doesn't happen with Watch Dogs. Yet. <laughs> Point being is they're doing it now with Watch Dogs. Yeah. Does nothing with the division. You wait, you watch. So you know the the, the store, GameStop? It's big in America. Yeah, yeah it's basically yeah. there like there's a lot of Americans joke about like how you've taken a brand new game and for trade to give you like five bucks. Yeah. And me and you got our Dragon Age from GameStop. That's right. Um well they've actually launched the a publishing division and they've signed the guys from uh, Insomniac that did uh, Until Dawn. Right. That might be all right. No, no, sorry, I read that wrong. They were signed Ready at Dawn. Oh, no. And Insomniac. Ready at Dawn are the guys who made the order. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> How are they still a company? 
They should have they should have went the way of fucking right. the ET on the right. Atari, that's what should have happened. Oh not necessarily oh, we, they should have been waste, stuck waste, out the desert wastelands and buried. Wastelands too. There's a bit where you're on the world map moving about, right? And if you've got the right perks, I mean if you hit it anywhere you find them, but you find like as you traverse the map, it's just an icon you move around the map to go where you want to go. You hit like loot caches. Yeah. Right? Houses for a fucking Easter egg. Normally you hit a loose loot cache, you get like some armour, some ammo, some guns. Yeah. I hit a loot cache, opened it, and it was just the screen. You have your like yeah. little squares that make you normally get like if if say there's fifty squares on your screen, six of them have got items in. Yeah. I opened this loot cache and every fucking square was full of ten of the same thing. Right? <laughs> Junk item. Little little icon, square icon with the ET logo on it. Right? What's all these perfectly good unused game cartridges all doing <laughs> buried here? <laughs> that's, I was fucking creased. Yeah, I was like, that's one of the best Easter eggs I've ever seen in my life. That was amazing. And I collected them all and sold them. Nice. But fucking, um, it was just brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. What were we talking about? I had another point. Ready at dawn. Yeah. Oh yeah. But the thing is, oh, yeah, I've got, I have got a controversial members. opinion on them that you still might not good. like. I was going to say something very similar. I don't think they're good. I think they fucked up. I think what they did was they made the transition from the mobile game and genre into the console game and genre. I think they did it well. They did a very good aesthetic job. Yeah. I mean, aesthetically, it's very, still one of the very, best games. Very good. The story was all right. It wasn't outstanding. It would have been outstanding if it continued where if the it fucking wasn't the game ended. Of a children's story. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's what they fucked up. They fucked up on content, yeah. and and I I and think if they, they take that on board, there is no way they can't take that on board. They got absolutely pumped. Ubisoft. Yeah. Some of the top. Ubisoft. They take fuck all on board. Yeah. Some of the top, like YouTube game critics and people like that, put them. Their game, they put the order at number one for worst or most or and most disappointing game of the year. There is no fucking way. Yeah. There's no way they can't have took that on board. There's no way it was the worst, most disappointing I'd agree with. No, it wasn't the worst. Disappointing, definitely. Like, that's the thing, it was quite enjoyable for the five hours that it lasted. Yeah. And but it looked amazing. The lighting and it was fantastic. Yeah. So really, I mean I'm not writing them off. Anyone can have like a bad day. A blip. Well, it was more than a bad day. <laughs> That's it. They didn't just drop a bollock, did they? They dropped it two years late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and to be fair, Drive Club. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit late, wasn't it? Yeah. Like a week or so, or something like that. Yeah, a week after the <laughs> a week after the two year launch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two, two, two years and one week late. Yeah, they were still even late on the two year late deadline, if you remember. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Yeah, how's Dry Club? How was Drive Club still a thing? Well, it's not. <laughs> the whole studio got disbanded. Yeah. Codemasters picked them all up. We talked about that last time. Because we were game, all like, right? how's Codemasters still a oh, thing? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've, I've got the game, and you know, I still switch it on every now and then. I just don't. There's some free DLC for motorbikes for it. Actually, I don't know the other day. Have a look. Drive Club. Because Drive Club's pretty good. It's good fun. You know what I mean? It is a fucking good game. <laughs> that wasn't so bad, like. So, anybody got any interest in the new Star Fox? Yeah, only because I've got an interest in keeping an eye on it. I don't know about being adamantly keen to buy it. But I've got an interest in well, it. Well, the bite, you're going to have to get a Wii U. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. I'm not, but I, I am interested in it because, like, Star Fox was the game that came with my SNES. Yeah. Do you classic. know what I mean? It was like, it's a classic. And it was rock hard. It was, like, impossible, almost. You think about the motor skills we must have had as kids. Because, honestly, if I try and play them now, I'm like... I was I was talking to this, I was talking about this to Bingham a while ago because uh, we used to he had a SNES and he had loads of games and we used to gang round his uh, like after school and just fucking sit and play mm. and now I can go back to it I mean admittedly it'll be on like an emulator or something yeah. but 
and I'll get absolutely kicked to fuck on whatever I do and I'm like holy shit these games are so fucking hard yeah I used to breathe them as a child I couldn't right. get off the first level of Ghosts and Goblins last Sega, time I played it Sega Master System the game I went back and played an emulator last year right Alex and, the Kid no I, I love Wonder Alex Boy. Kid you know how much I love them games but I did love them yo ro shim back but anyway fucking uh, Spake, remember Space Harrier Fucking love Space Harrier. How I played that the arcade. How so fucking much. hard was that though? After the first three levels, because it was just the screen was just full of bullets coming at you, and you had to just yeah kind of dodge them and shoot these big fucking dragons and yeah, shit. It was, it was awesome. awesome. It was better than you, Hal. Man, Space Harrier. Yeah, like I've got Manic Miner for my phone. I bought it for my phone, and I can't get off the first level without putting the cheat in. Yeah. For infinite lives, and like I completed that game yeah. when I was a kid, and you only get three lives, no continues, no savings. It's crazy, isn't it? You can you win extra lives with points, though. Mm, no. Yeah, you do. Money, money. Yes, you do. Oh, no, I remember. You do. All right, I'll take your word for it. No, I don't know. Oh, you know the arc. Survival you were talking about, mm-hmm. then people got sued. It's it is getting released on PS4 in July, so it is coming out. I'm still not gonna get it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care enough. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know where it fits sort of on my sort of radar because it's kind of like yeah, it looks mildly interesting, but it doesn't. It doesn't. There's nothing stands out about it. The only thing that stands out for for me is dinosaurs. I like. That. I think dinosaurs in a lot of that war. Has anybody played the Mirror's Edge? No, I saw you, you did though, didn't you? Yeah. What did you think? It looks beautiful. It looks really nice. It looks so nice. How does it play? That's a whole different kettle of fish. <laughs> you know what? It, did you just play the first one on I the did. PS3? Yeah, 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 it was a yeah. good game. You know it was fiddly as fuck yeah, the control yeah, it was good though yeah so it's they seem to have made it a bit less fiddly and you can actually <laughs> map the controls this time to what you want um, and it looks great it plays kind of good but I'm thinking it's kind of more the same like with the PS3 I enjoyed it but it was a chore like I felt like I had to finish it because I'd started it yeah. I wasn't really you know it was very linear I still enjoyed it like but I think this one is is a bit more open. It's going to be more open worldy. So I don't know. I might pick it up. I doubt it. Like I'm waiting for it to be cheap. So I was thinking about other open world games, and and, and my head went. I went to that just cause three, and in my head it feels like that game's already been and gone. Just on the subject of open world, it's just been and gone. Yeah. Just didn't even make a splash. By all accounts, it's not bad. Like, I mean, if you look at reviews and stuff for it, they're all yeah. positive. Do you know what I mean? But it's like, no one's been like, oh my God, Just Cause 3, it's so crazy. You know what I mean? I've seen some funny gifs where somebody's like, stuck a rope on a cow's head and then stuck the other end of the rope on a fucking big... Uh, like pole and catapulted it. I think I've seen the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Shit like that. And you just think that would wear off really quick. Like, the novelty of it, for me. I guess it's just like an average game. Let's have a look. Oh, good news. Crash Bandicoot's coming back. <laughs> um. Good, I thought he was going to say, good news, I've got cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, just a second. Justin. I'm sorry, Justin. <laughs> so there's an untitled Spider-Man PS4 project. Who cares? Yeah. yeah has care. there ever been a yes. Spider-Man game? Yes, there has. PlayStation 1. Yeah. Spider-Man game. Was yeah, you're right. fucking awesome. Yeah, it was, actually. That was the first time you introduced the mechanic with the fucking... Where you shot your web up the... Um, uh, the ceiling. Up the ceiling. Yeah, or, yeah. or through a vent. You could shoot in yeah, any yeah. direction. And then zip line along it. And it was the first time that mechanic had been introduced. And it was awesome. And it was a good game. Yeah, it was. It was decent. And every time I see a Spider-Man game, I always hope... It's going to be something like that, but it, it never has been since. Yeah, yeah, that's the Watch Dogs 2 parable again, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> parable, parable of Watch Dogs 2. <laughs> do, you know what I, do you know what I hunger for, what I really yearn for from the gaming industry? A black man. I yearn for more generic storylines <laughs> and forgettable characters. I wouldn't, and I, I like them to overhype and overpromise 
the mechanics and quality of the game and then disappoint on delivery. Do you think there's anything like that coming out soon that might fulfil my needs? Well, you're in luck. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> So Borderlands 3 has been confirmed at PAX East. Cool, that would be good. Looking looking forward to that. Tell Kaylee, Kaylee's just, the missus has just entered the room, there's a Sims type game that apparently Liam Jones loves and it's it's a freebie this month on PlayStation. It's called Tropica 5. So you can download that and you'll enjoy that. Well, will I? Yeah. Well, apparently Andy says you will enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, then... Not you know. so much Sims as SimCity. If you don't enjoy it, yeah. I'm going to ban you from having sex with me and any of my friends for the next month. <laughs> well, she looks Get totally hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever want a cup of tea made for you again? Yes, please. I'll have one as well. Right. Be nice. No, I will be very nice. <laughs> but yeah, there's a Sims game coming out for you. That isn't Sims, but apparently, according to Liam J- Jones, Jones is in, rated. I'm not a fan of Sims City. It's not SimCity. It is. It's sim- It's more similar to that than is Sims, it? yeah. Well, why like she, why she here? What have you been playing this week? What have I been playing this week? Mm-hmm. Me minge. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <Nothing> really? <laughs> the Division was the latest thing I played. Yeah, she's been going on The Division. She says she doesn't play Wastelands 2 because she's not cool enough. <laughs> she doesn't understand. It's too complex. That or you just didn't buy her a copy. I didn't buy her a copy as well. <laughs> We've got some good news. Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot's, Bandicoot's <laughs> coming back. Oh god, she likes that, don't you? <laughs> You've got there's, a, there's, a new, uh, there's a new Jack and Daxter game. Same I'll say. Didn't play the original. I'm sure you had one on PS3, didn't you? No, that was Ratchet oh, and Clank. Maybe that might be it then. It's the same thing, isn't it? It's That's all what shit. I, I was like, <laughs> I just remember saying that. I was like, isn't that the one Kaylee plays? Oh, I'm sure she'll be happy with that. I haven't played Ratchet and Clank probably for about two, ten years. No, you have. You've played them through, man. You know what? If, if they do release Crash again, that means fucking Spyro is going to come back as well. Please, no. Who the uh, fuck wants to Spyro the Dragon? Since, since I actually since really since liked the first one when I played it as a child. But even as a child, the second and third one just felt contrived as fuck. <laughs> Since Equinox gave it up, though. Oh, check him uh, out. Insomniac gave it up to me. Equinox, it's been utter gash. It's been the worst thing you could possibly play. Hang on a minute. That's why ladies and gentlemen, my girlfriend's in the game. And... Justin, this is for you. Kelly, what's your opinions on Nintendo? For Justin. This is Justin's podcast today because he doesn't like us wrestling rappers. And he's yeah. a Nintendo fanboy. What do you think of Nintendo? You're, you're just a girl. And I bet, <laughs> what do you think? Maybe you should get a proper play, a proper a playing box, as it were. Yeah, get a proper player box, Justin. <laughs> Go back to Japan where you belong. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Justin. Fuck off. Justin was into World of Warcraft anyway. Yeah, he's into gay stuff. He's into World of Warcraft and men with moustaches. What stuff? Preferably. <laughs> he, likes, he likes plumbers with moustaches. Ah, yes. Let's see what you did there. That's a very oblique segue, that. <laughs> <laughs> it's good though, wasn't it? That's Can, a pause. You, <laughs> can you remember a few weeks back you mentioned that um, you porn had created the own. Um, yeah, the own e-sports, esports team. team yeah. Well, that esports team has now been banned from every competition. Why? That's not fair. Because they were created by Uporn. That's so? total censorship. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it is. That's how bad is that? That is out of order. That like I wanted to say. Is there a petition? Can we sign a petition? <laughs> <laughs> I want them back. The thing is, though, as well as usually with esports teams, right? They ex- they expect the people who were like under their banner to be like well behaved and all the rest of the stuff because obviously it reflects on them. You just know if you were on an esports team for you porn, you could do whatever the fuck you want and they wouldn't give a shit. <laughs> but also amongst geeks as well, like how much creds that they they would be the fucking who's, rock stars. Who's, exactly. Who's, who's team are you on? Monster Energy Drink. Yes, I'm team you porn. Every time they walk in a room, they'd have a fucking theme tune playing for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a team Mountain Dew? I don't know. There's bound to be teams that are sponsored by Mountain Dew. Team Cheetos or whatever. Team Parents Basement. <laughs> I'm actually quite gutted about that. I'm disappointed. Yeah. 
I am disappointed. I am disappointed. That's that's the name of this episode. I am disappointed. I am disappointed. Much am I disappointed, Am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's because Jesus. Well, you've got the most disappointed person in the room right here. Yes, <laughs> I know how to teach the true meaning of disappointment. <laughs> See, I remember the first time we had sex, she cried for hours. Like throwing a tennis ball down an alleyway. If, if the alleyway was tiny, and the tennis ball tinier. <laughs> what the fuck? Kelly, put your crack pipe down, please. <laughs> How's this for a stinging insult? <laughs> I'll show you. If the, uh, you know, the alley was like, you know... <laughs> it wasn't an alley, it was a corridor at best. <laughs> Still the kettle on, Lord. Are we done? Um, no. Go on then, move on. Move on. I thought it would be soft. Not them again. I've apparently sent surveys out to division players. Have you just getting one? I haven't been I haven't I haven't logged back on the yeah. division. Well, it wouldn't be in the division, it would be in your email. Probably I haven't, I haven't checked. No, I don't know. Uh, to see if the players would be interested in visiting new cities or time periods with DLC. Cities, maybe not, not time periods. Well, this is the thing, it doesn't even have to be like necessarily like other cities, just so much as like other boroughs of Manhattan, because it's only one section, isn't it? Yeah. Because well, like they don't have Queens on there, do they? Yeah. yeah. Or New Jersey. Or Brooklyn. Because mm. I've got Brooklyn was at the start, wasn't it? Yeah, I know, but like, Why it was, it was the part fuck of the... are they going to change the time period? It's totally not relevant to the yeah, law of not. the game. Oh, honestly, man. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Ubisoft. They have actually said, uh, one of the things I was reading about this morning, but like, I didn't write it down because I just don't care right. um, <laughs> basically it's like they've, they've, they're on record as saying the problems they've heard about in terms of people exploiting and cheating and stuff they've received them loud and clear and they are gonna they are making things about and apparently since this new cheat detection shit's been in they've like they've banned a lot of people now permanently and uh, they've have you spotted Jason yet? No. Your first offence has banned. been has been upped from one week to two weeks, but your second offence is still a lifetime ban. And uh, they've also said that um, this oh that was it, which I found was really weird. They're going to say that like because they can't um, like assume everyone's playing experience is going to be the same. Basically, they're going we can't be all everything to everyone, so bugs are going to slip through from time to time. But but what they're going to do is now when bugs are, like, people are aware of them, they're going to post them all on a forum so people know what they are, right? So people can exploit them. Well, this is the thing, because they're like, we want people to be aware of them so they can choose not to do it, so they know that they're breaking the rules. But what they've said is, if once it's been discovered and it's up there on a, like in an official capacity, if people then continue to do it, then they say that as, like, Fair, they've been given fair warning. Well, it's giving the people enough for it to themselves, so yeah. I don't see the problem. That's not a bad idea, really. Yeah, so they've basically gone like, look, this is what's wrong with the game, if you do this, it's considered cheating, and then if people do it, they're like, well, you're being told. What happens if you don't check? Well, this is what it. you do how, by how, mistake. How, how do you place that? And they've basically said, um, if people come across bugs during the natural course of their playing, then they won't be punished for that. But it's like, at a certain point, like, what? It's How can you tell the difference? Yeah, exactly. The line's gonna blur at some point. Do you know what I mean? Well, surely they'll if you if you get banned, there'll be some kind of. But how how process. do they ban you? Do they ban you from your IP address, or do they ban you from your username? I don't know. Because if they ban you from your username, what's stopping you creating a new account? I I assume it's probably IP them. But what they've said is that's for that's for blatant like um, cheating, and they've also because before this this cheating thing was for cheating software, right? So we're mainly the PC people who've been like putting sneaky mods in to do shit. Mm. Right? In terms of like or like broken things with the game, in terms of actual just exploits, like what the kind of shit we were doing with the dark zone, they've now said they're gonna Hold on, hang on, hang on. I didn't do any exploits, I just came across things in the natural course of my gameplay. Alright, the things we came across naturally <laughs> during the course of our gameplay for several hours at a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, apparently what they're doing now is um, they've got several... Bullet, Bullet King was just too hard for me. 
We've got several tiers of um. Yeah, like basically, it's like you can have character rollbacks, which is basically your character just gets reset to fucking level one, um, account bans and permanent suspension. But what they're gonna do is they they're gonna they're gonna monitor people's activity to see how much they abuse certain things, and then they get basically depending on the severity of their crimes, they get given one of those one of those penalties. But they've also said they're going to apply it retroactively as well. So it's basically, it's like, say if we'd done lots of things just throughout the course of our normal playing, right, but we didn't do anything from now on, now it's going to happen. But if we were Jason, for instance, <laughs> we look at Jason's record and go, holy shit, he's been doing this for months. Yeah, he's gone the distance. So, yeah. Well, that's probably a good thing I didn't exploit much. Like I say, I don't think it'll make any difference for us because we'll not, like, all the cheating we did, we're not doing now and we haven't done any since and we haven't even been playing the game, so... Like, you need something to flash up on their radar to begin with, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know how, like, video games get blamed for loads of shit that happens, like, in real life, like, school shootings... All sorts of stuff shit. just being blamed for, but yes, continue. Yeah. Well, somebody's been playing Grand Theft Auto and then took it in the real world and what they've done is they've done a heist and they've uh... <laughs> <laughs> right uh, this is excellent I'm just, I like this, like, this is so let me sit up <laughs> so all the copies of uncharted 4 were getting shipped in transit right and some fuckers heisted the van with all the copies of uncharted 4 in it and nicked them that is fucking genius somebody in the uk so somebody's selling all these um I wonder if we can get our hands on them because that is fucking. That is genius. <laughs> How good is that? Has he actually said it's to do with GTA Five or are you? Just no, no. I'm just making the assumption, you know, because it's going to get. It'll get blamed anyway. Why not start it? Yeah, GTA gets blamed for everything at the minute. Yeah. So somebody's actually heisted a fucking truck of uncharted four games. That's one, amazing. One of the things that I saw on uh, the internet the other day that made us laugh. Uh, do you know, like the rat? Well, I say rapper in the loosest term, Drake. Right, people have basically said. So he's the one who thinks the world's flat. I don't know, but they're basically like, does doesn't he fucking every single one of his album covers look like a GTA loading screen? And it's really true. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Drake. Drake. Let's have a look. I don't know who Drake is. He's fucking. He's trash. He's garbage. That's probably why I don't know. But uh, <laughs> there's one trashy garbage rapper who thinks uh, the world's flat and Neil deGrasse Tyson oh that's that's not him that's uh, oh has Neil deGrasse Tyson had a go at him um, yeah Neil deGrasse Tyson destroyed him over Twitter I can't remember who it is Neil deGrasse Tyson's a fucking legend like <laughs> there his album covers uh is that there? Hang on, I'll, I'll see if I can find you there. I'll see if I can find you there. I'll see if I can find you there. The picture I like. There we go. I've just put rapper think into Google and put rapper thinks Earth is flat. There we go. Who is he? Rapper Bob. <laughs> <laughs> that could be anybody. <laughs> oh, B-O-B, sorry. Oh, that's it. Ah, that's him. I thought he was just called Bob. <laughs> I'm Rapper Bob. Hello there, I'm Rapper Bob. <laughs> Rapping's my job. <laughs> Rapping, it's bread and butter. Like that. I think I'll have a look at that Neil deGrasse Tyson versus Rapper Bob debate then. It's not much of a debate, really. I just like I like Neil deGrasse Tyson's put downs. Always, always like. What Sal said, we can't say any more when we end the podcast. Niggas. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Excuse oh. me. <laughs> and on that note. I'm not allowed. I didn't know. I didn't know. Got the word. He said he didn't want to. <laughs> Fuck me. I can't say to find it. I'll dig it out later on, though. But it was pretty funny. So can we not say that then? No, no, I don't think we can. What right. was, what what did I say we could say? I don't remember. And on that note. Because oh, you right, said yeah. it sounded too much like Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah. And on that bombshell. <coughs> oh, Rosie likes her presents. Oh, good. Right. Bye, fuck off.